Laura Ingram of Fox News brought on Ben Shapiro and it seemed as if they initially wanted to talk about the college admission scandal, but it kind of just turned into a session where they both just um, take a dump on the left and blame them for any and all of America's problems. So I don't understand what the overall goal of this discussion was, but nonetheless, enjoy. Members of Generation E believe he or she should get into the best colleges, even if he or she does not have the best grades or the best scores. And they develop, by the way, this warped view of their own self-importance because mommy and daddy raised them to believe that they were special. What's the end result here? Well, many of these young people, and it's, it's not just the wealthy kids, grow up to be demanding, entitled adults. I want to begin with what we were talking about earlier, and it, it dovetails into everything you write about in your book, the emerging, emerging politics of grievance and entitlement, Generation E. Uh, your thoughts on how to best thwart this, combat this, cure this? I mean, I think that the, the best way to combat a lot of this stuff is to focus on achievement and freedom and responsibility. The fact is that freedom comes along with the duty to achieve, and you're not owed anything in this world. Why should you perceive yourself to be owed a college slot? Why should your parents give you everything? You know, that, that sort of mentality is foreign to a lot of the bases for Western civilization and, and the basis for America, this idea that we were supposed to go forth and conquer, that we were supposed to forge into the wilderness and we were supposed to build something out there. That sort of mentality, unfortunately, has been abandoned in favor of this grievance culture, as you suggest, that says that we're all owed something from the world. And if we don't get it, it's because the system has failed us. Well, and, and even the, the shirt that that young woman was wearing, T-shirt, when she was confronting Chelsea Clinton, of all people, like Chelsea Clinton's, but you, isn't that kind of a, I hate, I'm so sick of the phrase jump the shark because that's jump the shark, but isn't that it telling you a, a lot about just how pathetic this whole entitlement movement has gone when Chelsea Clinton is targeted? Yeah, I mean, when Chelsea Clinton is too radical for you because she's too far on the right, I think that maybe you've, you've not just jumped the shark, you've jumped the entire aquarium. It's demonstrative of how subjective feeling have taken the place of objective fact. What Chelsea Clinton had to say about Elhan Amar was basic objective fact. She was speaking anti-Semitism. Chelsea Clinton called her out on that. And somehow she's now responsible for the Christchurch shooting because she did all of that. But that's how some people feel, and therefore it becomes the truth. And they've been told that they're right and that they're special and that they are, they're wonderful individuals because they go to places like... NYU and because their parents told them they were special. And so objective fact never actually has to be brought into the conversation. Now, that entire clip was incredibly incoherent, and I think it was actually hard to follow because they kept subtly changing the topics and it kept branching off. But if you missed the overall takeaway, it's that the left is bad, everything they ever say or do is bad, and anything that the right does is good and altruistic. That's essentially what they wanted to communicate. Um, and what they said was just batshit insane. There were various snippets of things that were just laughably untrue. So they talk about the college admission scandal, and Ingram opens by saying, Generation E believes that they should get into the best colleges, even if they don't have the best grades or the best scores. Nobody is saying that. I have not heard a single person say that, we should be allowed to get into the best colleges even if we don't have the best grades or the best scores. If anything, people on the left are actually the ones arguing for real meritocracy where conservatives like you, like you are in favor of the system remaining rigged. You're in favor of the status quo. And then she says, quote, many of these young people, and it's not just the wealthy, grow up to be demanding entitled adults. Now, does she give you an example of this? No, not necessarily. They go on to talk about the college student who confronted Chelsea Clinton. But if you're talking about the college admission scandal and it not just being about elites, which it is, then you have to provide us with some type of example, even a news story that you cherry picked, but she gave us nothing. We're so entitled because we dare to ask for policies that other countries around the world have, like Medicare for All. And I know that they didn't explicitly say that, but you can kind of tell that the conversation started to kind of branch off and go in that direction. And it really explicitly went in that direction when Ben Shapiro came on. And he adds, you're not owed anything in this world. And he claims that we think if we don't get it, it's because the system has failed us. So first of all, 
we are owed certain things. We are owed healthcare. I think that we are owed the ability and opportunity to succeed. That means purchasing power, economic opportunities that previous generations had. And the reason why I say we're entitled to these types of things like healthcare and whatnot is because every single paycheck that we get before we even open it, the government takes money from that. So I think that we actually are entitled and have a right to say, you know what, maybe it's time that my tax dollars benefit me and my children and not just the elites and not just go to never ending wars. So um, we are entitled. And if you don't like that, then I don't know what to tell you, Ben. He also says, you know, if we don't get it, it's because the system has failed. Well, the system has failed. We don't live in a meritocracy. And this does go back to the college admission um, question as well. Because think about this. Jared Kushner's father donated $2.5 million to Harvard. And then would you look at that? He got in. So you can be an idiot and a C student and get in and then become president. It happened with George W. Bush. It happened with Donald Trump. And we don't know his grades, but I can guess they're going to be pretty bad because he's kind of a dumb guy. So, I mean... What he tries to do here, and what really they both try to do, is take this college admission scandal and somehow make it about the left, when this is about elites, and the left is the most vocal about taking on elites and getting them to pay their fair share. So, I mean, it doesn't even make sense that they would find a way to blame the left, but I mean, if there's any blame to go around, it's going to be on the left, and you can bet your ass they're going to find a way to do that. And then they shift the conversation to Chelsea Clinton and how that somehow relates to the entitlement of people who aren't elites, and not Chelsea Clinton. And uh, Ben Shapiro then says, It's demonstrative of how objective feeling has taken the place of objective fact. What Chelsea Clinton had to say about Ilhan Omar was basic objective fact. No, it was subjective. It wasn't objective, it was subjective. Because if you're criticizing APAC and you think that that's tantamount to anti-Semitism and criticism of all Jewish people, then you need to get your head checked. But this is someone who will tell you that there's no such thing as bigotry unless he says it's bigotry. So everyone is an anti-Semite, but nobody's a bigot, nobody's a homophobe, nobody's racist when there are actually other calls of racism and bigotry. So for example, Ben Shapiro is perfectly fine allowing businesses to discriminate against LGBTQ couples. He's perfectly fine telling his own friend, Dave Rubin, that he wouldn't bake him a cake or even go to an anniversary party because gay weddings are icky. And that's not homophobia, but criticizing a lobbying group is anti-Semitism. I mean, do you understand how disingenuous these people are? This is a double standard. They have a set of standards that apply to you that don't apply to them. And it's comical. I don't know why they're not thinking about how silly they look right now. And he suggests that the student who confronted Chelsea Clinton claimed that she's responsible for the Christchurch attack. I don't think anyone said that. And even she said that she's not blaming Chelsea Clinton directly for the attack. She rightfully called out Chelsea for piling on and contributing to an atmosphere of Islamophobia, where everything Muslims say about Israel is deemed anti-Semitic when Ilhan Omar was talking about the influence of AIPAC. I mean, it's just, that's the point that she was trying to make. But they flip it. The student wasn't calling out Chelsea Clinton's entitlement and white privilege. It's that they're entitled for calling out Chelsea Clinton. Everything is the opposite to them. Yes means no, no means yes, left is right, right is left, up is down, down is up. I mean, everything that they say is basically telling you to deny your lying eyes and what we say is objective fact and what you say is subjective feelings. It's complete bullshit. Now they get into the Christchurch shooting and they play a clip of Eddie Glaude Jr. Jr. on MSNBC. He's one of the only people who actually knows what he's talking about. And he says, Donald Trump didn't directly pull the trigger, but what he's doing is laying the groundwork for these types of Islamophobic attacks. And it's true, but listen to the way they flip it and blame, guess who? The left. Part of what New Zealand represented and represents is in some interesting sort of way, in my view, right, in a wholesale attack on what Donald Trump has enabled. I'm not trying to blame what happened in New Zealand on President Trump, mm. but he has helped create an environment for this sort of carnage to happen. So that's where it's going. So he might not have pulled the trigger, but it's the environment of Trump that created the hate and the intolerance, et cetera, et cetera. 
That's reverberated across the airwaves, Ben, for the last 70, 72 hours plus, and it's still going. Well, there's certainly a narrative that's being driven by the left when it comes to the Christchurch shooting. Every single person in Western civilization who saw that and was a decent person was appalled by that slaughter, obviously. And the attempt to immediately jump into the manifesto of the killer and then give it the broadest possible coverage by the media to do exactly what the killer wanted, which was to generate all sorts of political controversy in an attempt to tear apart Western civilization, is really quite despicable. And one of the things that I, I thought was, was so fascinating, if you actually take a look at the manifesto, which I, recognize, which I recommend everyone should not, but if you actually take a look, what the killer does is he, he says, essentially, Western civilization is white people. And what you see from the intersectional left is a similar perception of what Western civilization is. Western civilization is a hierarchical system uh -huh. of racial domination. That's not what the West is at all, which is why we all, as civilized human beings, mourn the slaughter of innocent people, no matter what their religion, living in our civilization. The mental gymnastics that you have to do to say that a far-right fascist who believes in a white ethnostate is more comparable to the left, I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. I almost want to applaud him for saying that with a straight face. So Ben Shapiro says, the killer claims Western civilization is white people, and what you see from the intersectional left is the West is a hierarchical system of racial domination. Now, first of all, intersectional left it doesn't mean anything. You made that word up. That's not a thing. There's no such thing as the intersectional left. What does that even mean? Do you know what the word intersectional means? Intersectional refers to somebody's individual identity. You have an intersectional identity if you belong to two marginalized groups, black and Muslim, gay and female. That's what intersectional means. So to use it as this all-encompassing term and a descriptor for the left, it shows that he's just trying to throw out these buzzwords like cultural Marxist and uh, postmodern neo-Marxist neo or whatever the fuck Jordan Peterson and all of these right-wing frauds use to try to demonize the left. It's a vacuous buzzword that has no meaning whatsoever. You're just trying to use that word that the right-wing audience of Fox News won't understand, but they'll think you sound intelligent when people who are actually educated know you sound like a dumbass. He then creates a straw man of the left's argument about Western culture. He made this up. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I've never heard a leftist talk about Western culture in this way. The left's criticism overall is rarely about Western culture itself. It's about power structures and institutions. And we often look towards other Western economic systems like those in Scandinavia as a correct model. So we're not even necessarily talking about Western culture. Western culture is something that right-wingers are more fascinated about because they talk about wanting to save Western culture and stop the browning of America. They're the ones who are concerned about Western culture, but they claim that we're talking about Western culture. It's just, it's preposterous. I don't give a fuck about Western culture. I care about human culture and having us improve the lives of normal working class human beings. That's what I care about. So, I mean, they just, they make arguments up and they claim this is what we believe. It's a straw man. And then they argue against the straw man they've created when we're not actually saying that. They create these artificial descriptions that don't mean anything like intersectional left to try to attack us for, I don't even know what the reason would be to use the words intersectional and attribute that to the left. But I mean, nonetheless, he's trying to get us somehow, but they just come off as unhinged. And this entire discussion was incoherent. But by and large, if you paid attention, they blamed the left for the college admission scandal when it was really about rich elites. I don't know if they're on the right or the left, but it's certainly not the left that, you know, you can deem the new left today in progressives. They blame the NYU student who confronted Chelsea for being entitled and didn't mention Chelsea Clinton's entitlement. And they claim that a far-right fascist terrorist is more comparable to uh, the left, since their criticism of Western culture is similar to his. Do you get the overall takeaway? The left is bad at all times. Any and everything they ever say is wrong. And the right is always right. There's no room for nuance. There's no room for an actual in-depth analysis. It's all vacuous buzzwords like cultural Marxism and intersectional left and entitlement. And there's no specific examples. They're not using the arguments of a supposed entitled Generation E person. They're not citing 
a person on the left who's saying Western culture is about racial domination. They're making all of this up because the uneducated Fox News audience is going to accept it and buy it hook, line, and sinker. So this is what media bias and propaganda looks like. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.